Welcome everyone to this week's video. Today we are on Fish Friday number 88 and we have a good one for you today. Today's fish is a fish that's one of the best tasting fish I promise you will ever eat. Especially if you cook right and it's definitely one of the most fun that you will have ever eat. Um, the most fun to catch I, I should say. Today's fish that we're going to be talking about is... Bam! The Northern Pike. So the Northern Pike, or scientific name Esox Lucius, again that is Esox Lucius or Lucius, is part of the family Esocity, which is the family of pike and mud minnows. It has a holarctic distribution, um, and holarctic means that it's found, it's circumpolar basically. It's found throughout a, um, in all of an arctic in all of the Arctic. Um, so think about all throughout the Northern Hemisphere. Um, they are primarily found in freshwater, but they will venture into brackish water every once in a while. Um, but they are primarily freshwater. Um, essentially, they can be found in any water body that contains fish that also has a, that has certain areas that have heavy amounts of vegetation. And that's very important. We'll get into that later, but it's crucial that it has to have that vegetation, but it also has to have fish. Um, they are a rather large fish. Um, they're definitely not small. The IGFA record is 55 pounds, 10 ounces, which is about 25 kilograms, but they're usually found at about half that or even less than half of that weight. Um, there you will get up to about 91 to 140 centimeters in max length which is about 55 inches at the upper end but they're usually Ooh, excuse me they're usually only 40 to 55 centimeters which is 15.7 to 21.6 inches um, in terms of weight they're usually found at about that um, 22 kilograms which is about 12 pounds sort of thing um, so these are not that's definitely a monster that 55 pounder um, if you can't tell they do have this sort of cylindrical body shape um, real you know just kind of chunky in the middle cylindric cylindrical they have this really large caudal and anal fin and a large do sorry caudal fin remember the caudal is the tail fin and you have the dorsal and the anal fin and they're really large and got these really nice rounded edges um and we'll get into reason why for that but that's very crucial and look how far back they are on the body almost set right next to the tail um now if you know anything about northern pike they do have very large heads um, extremely large heads um, with this kind of duck bill shovel nose um, jawbone and that large head has plenty of teeth um, a lot a lot of teeth um, in fact they can have up to 700 teeth now most of the times people see the teeth and they're looking at these larger fangs that are down here at the bottom, but most of the teeth are actually on these little pads um, at the top on the roof of their mouth. What that does is they're very notorious for eating fish and snapping at them sideways. And then they use those upper pads to sort of pull their fish, those uh, their prey into their um, throat. So that's what these are. So these are more for your like holding the fish and these, they don't really chew. They're just using them to pull, um, pull them farther down in their throat. Now in terms of color, they are this more olive green, um, not really modeled. It's more an olive green with this lighter or white belly. And then they have these yellow spots. I wouldn't call this a modeling pattern, but they have this yellow bars or spots on the body and then they're darker 
spots on the fins like you have this olive green here and then the fins are supposed to be this yellowish color or even red sometimes they will get reddish and they have dark streaks and dark spots on there um so i mean just really camouflage when you really think about it think about where i said these live and they really like to be in vegetative areas you can imagine that these can be pretty difficult to see they're pretty good camouflagers um something else that's interesting to note that's pretty unique to them is the scaling i know it's hard to see but um we'll zoom in um right here you can see that on northern pike the they have scaling on the very top part of the gill flap but not on the bottom so their scales and their scaling actually only goes halfway um see if we can tell here this isn't the best picture but you can see that you know right here you have almost a line where scales just stop that's a to me was pretty interesting and it seems to be pretty indicative now in terms of reproduction the female pike will lay sticky eggs they're actually sticky orangish yellow eggs on the vegetation that's actually why um, they needed those vegetated areas because that is the only way they will reproduce apparently they can't do it on um, like rocks or anything like that like it has to be on live vegetation um, they exhibit no parental care whatsoever they lay the eggs in the young hatch out um, fairly, uh, fairly unsuccessfully um, they're about only about 5% of the eggs hatch out successfully and I want to say about 1% of those actually make it into legitimate adulthood and one reason for that um, is how aggressive these fish are they are extremely extremely aggressive and they will become cannibalistic when food sources are scarce so you know when you think about all these babies just hatched food can get a little scarce for what they can eat so they do become cannibalistic fairly quickly with each other um, that aggressive nature though is why these are such such heavily sought after game fish um, not only that the parent they are so good they're so delicious to eat um, wonderful wonderful eat um, you know just gorgeous then there's almost like a cult following of people people love to fish for northern pike they think it's one of their most fun they're not too terribly hard to catch and they're not that uncommon um, apparently their populations have been declining a little bit but I I'm not worried about the northern pike um, personally now we were talking about how their fins are set farther back and this is kind of their feeding one of the interesting facts that I want to end the video on is pike are capable what they are they are they're very much like the gar like some of this they're fast start movers they're sudden extreme high energy bursts of swimming so instead of you know being constantly swimming fast kind of like the tuna um pike like the gar and everything use quick bursts of speed um now a lot of fish use those fast start movements but most of them are used to avoid life threatening situations but the pike is using them to actually try and eat something um, they go from they're really sluggish and sluggish and hiding they stay on the bottom quite a bit and then the fast they quickly move and then once they re reach terminal velocity which is the absolute fastest they can go that's when they start slowing down and what they do is they make s conformations of with their body so they make their body into an s which is causing it to spring spring and just all that power and with all the with these fins being so large and rounded on the back and the caudal fin being back here it allows for a ton of pressure for them to suddenly catch up things when they want to slow down they actually turn into a C and that's how they slow themselves down and then, I mean that's how they stop and they either eat their food or they go from there and 
kind of conjoining with their feeding, and this was something that just really uh, blew my mind. Usually, fish that eat like that have um, they eat um, one large meal and then they digest for quite a while. But an interesting trait about northern pike is that they have really short digestion times and long feeding periods. Um, they go, they actually do a lot of those burst movements, um, catching as much prey as they can. So think about it, you know, like they are gorging themselves and then they're doing that potentially multiple times through a day. Apparently they digest f their f food extremely fast. It's really incredible because as I said, most of the time when you hear about this, you know, you think about wolves or tigers, things like that. They eat a meal and they sleep it off and they live off that meal for quite a long time. Not the pike. They seem to be very much high metabolic rate, moving things, getting stuff digested, getting getting stuff done. Now for the final interesting fact that we're going to end the video on. Um, this was requested by a member of the community who is actually from Finland. Um, and there are not many depictions of pi pike in fin in legends and myths except for Finland. Finland actually has a long history with Northern Pike. It's on many of their coat of arms um, in a, quite a few of their legends and in the places where Northern Pike are legends um, they're usually depicted as monsters <coughs> and that's still the case with Finland but I found out that in the there's a Finnish epic poetry like one of the epic poems like Odysseus and all that the wise god Vainamoinen again I, I hope I said that right Vainamoinen creates a magical uh, canal which is a stringed instrument kind of like a lyre from the jawbone of a giant pike that he slayed in a bog um, and that's one of the first times that I, that's one of the only legends I could find that where people or where a hero actually kept something from a pike. Usually it's just a monster that they kill and move on. Um, very rarely does it have anything to do afterwards, even though it is an important food fish. Anyway, but that was just really interesting and it made sense why a Finnish person requested that because it is all over the Finnish culture and all over Finland apparently. But thank you guys so much again. I really appreciate it. Hope to see you again. If I don't, please be safe. Have a great day. Please leave a like, comment, subscribe if you do. I'd really appreciate it. Hope to see you again. Take care of yourselves. Take care of your loved ones. And peace.